welcome. Thank you for having me. Um, I got to say, when I when I looked at the screener of this, I um, the immediately the, when the Dragon Lords logo comes up, I, I recognized it as a as a, a, a tip of the hat to the Shaw Brothers from the uh, the early uh, uh, kung fu movies of the 1970s and beyond. Um, and then when I when I watched the whole film, I, it was just so much fun to me um, seeing all these references. Um, you know, the spl the splotches on the film. Um, the logo, obviously, the use of the music, how it suddenly turns quite Western during one of the action sequences where typically they would, um, they would lift uh, Ennio Morricone or, or um, um, Lalo Schifrin and throw them in um, during those films. Tell me, was it, was it a fun film to make and how deep did you go into the references? There's probably some I've missed. Well, in terms of film, uh, filming the whole thing, it's not your conventional fun, I would have to say. It's not like going to the beach or you know having a day off or getting drunk with your friends type of fun. It's kind of like showing up on set at like seven in the morning and just stressing out for like the next seven or eight hours on set type of fun. Uh, so it's definitely a little bit unusual, but it was a lot of, dare I say, pain going through every single day on set, not only because of while well, waking up at around six or five in the morning and getting ready and costumes and everything, but just showing up on set, not sure if it's gonna rain that day or if the lighting is gonna be consistent. Of course, we are a very small budget film production, so we're not gonna have the ability to control the sun or bring in like a big ass light to replicate it. But so showing up on set, not sure about the weather, also coming up with the choreography, coming up with the camera angles and everything, just on the spot. It was definitely a lot of pressure, but at the end of the day, when you sit back and you watch it with the rest of the team and you see what you guys were able to do, that, in my opinion, was what made the whole experience worth it. And going back to the references, yes, so every single shot I intended to be a reference, to be an homage to the old school Shaw Brothers martial arts films. Uh, one of my favorite directors from Shaw Brothers, I don't know if you know him, uh, Lao Ga Leung. Uh, he directed a lot of the notable films from Shaw Brothers, such as Marshall Club, 36 Chambers of Shaolin, I'm sure a lot of people would know that one, starring Gordon Liu, uh, My Young Auntie, etc. And he was a huge inspiration to me, not only because of his profound knowledge on Chinese martial arts, traditional Chinese martial arts, you know, the man was a master at his craft, but just the way he knew how to put movements and traditional Chinese martial arts on the big screen and to make two characters fight each other, you know, something that's usually seen as brutish or violent, right? Physical fighting. But to be able to turn that into something beautiful and so well choreographed, he just has all my respect. So the Invincible Tiger and Crane is my homage, my tribute to Lao Ga Leung and to the old school Shaw Brothers genre. And I wanted to do him justice. So that's why every single movement is well researched. I watched many, many of his movies so many times, countless times. Just studying the fight choreo and how he puts movements together and so I intended every shot to be a reference to old-school Shaw Brothers films especially Marshall Club if you have seen Marshall Club starring Gordon Lee once again there's a lot of references to Marshall Club in the Invincible Tiger and Crane. The um, underneath the, the 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 obvious loving um, surface of the film the look of it the way that it uh, you know things happen Tell me a little bit about the concept, the, the philosophy underneath it, because that'll be missed on certain people. Like, I, I would miss that. So, in terms of the plot, if you could call it that, because in my opinion, like Bruce Lee once said, right, martial arts is about action, so you can leave the plot and the dialogue to a minimum. But what I intended to express with The Invincible Tiger and Crane is the idea that not all martial arts should be hard. Hard as in aggressive and brutish, right? Of course, there are many different styles of martial arts. Even within just Chinese Kung Fu, there are just so many different styles and branches. It's, you can't count all of them. Uh, and some styles are hard, they're aggressive, and they just ram into the other guy. Some styles are more pulled back, they're more soft and passive, right? Rather using your opponent's force against them, right? And in my own experience, you can't have one or the other by itself. You have to have a good combination of both, hard and soft, and that's what I wanted to express with the Invincible Tiger and Crane. The tiger representing the ferocity, the aggression, right, the hard style, and the crane which represents the soft style, right, and then only then 
can once you put the tiger and crane together, which is actually uh, an actual form within Chinese martial arts, tiger and crane style, right? Once you put the two together, you have the perfect balance and harmony of hard and soft. Then can you become a complete and whole martial artist, in my opinion, at least. Okay, and that, that's really cool. Again, the film is, is highly enjoyable on Thank its you. own terms, and um, I really uh, respect the, uh, the love that, and the, uh, the effort you guys put into it, and hopefully um, people will get to see it on the small screen, unfortunately, but uh, um, enjoy it, and I hope to see you again with your next project. Thank you so much. Um